everybody, it's Emily. It's been a while, but welcome to another Grass River micro class. Uh, I'm hanging out off the Fern Loop today with Finch Creek right behind me. Um, it is early March. We are getting close to spring, but it is obviously pretty wintry out today. So I thought it'd be a good day to talk about what black bears do in winter. Uh, so we'll talk about sort of the physiological mechanisms behind torpor, not hibernation, um, and then when they emerge and what regulates their emergence. Okay, so as I'm sure you know, black bears, sometime in the late fall, early winter, uh, they enter their dens. And that exact timing has to do a lot with the availability of food out on the landscape, particularly uh, was it a good or bad year for mast trees? So those are things um, like acorns or oaks and beeches that produce acorns and beech nuts. Um, those are really great high quality food sources for bears late in the season. So if there's a lot of those, they might stay active later. Um, but they enter their dens and then they enter what is called a state of torpor. Uh, so this is not hibernation, but it's sort of uh, a wishy-washy, almost getting toward hibernation, a slowing down, a type of dormancy. Uh, but hibernation itself is usually defined by, um, in warm-blooded animals, a real decrease in body temperature. And the reason many of our hibernating our true hibernators, like uh, ground squirrels and groundhogs, really lower their body temperature is to lower their metabolism um, so that they can sort of ride out the lean time of the year when food is not readily available. Uh, so our black bears, on the other hand, they maintain relatively high body temperature. Usually their body temperature is between 98 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. During torpor, it only drops to about 95. So pretty high body temperature. They do really slow down their breathing um, from about six to 10 breaths a minute to just about one breath a minute. And they also slow down their heart rate from about 40 to 50 beats per minute to just about eight to 20. Um, so they are definitely sort of just sort of sleeping and really in this state of semi dormancy uh, when they are in their dens. But that high body temperature um, allows them to be pretty responsive to stimuli. Uh, and because they have a high body temperature, their metabolism is also running. You know, that's what's keeping the body temperature high. Uh, it's running at a relatively high rate. And uh, bears are able to do that because they have packed on an amazing layer of fat uh, before they enter their dens in the fall. It can be up to five inches thick uh, and also their fur doubles its insulative capacity in the winter. So that really warm fur uh, combined with just living off that layer of fat allows them to have relatively high body temperature and metabolism um, during the winter and to respond to stimuli, which is more important for some bears than others. So the females have to be much more responsive than the males on average to stimuli while in torpor because um, reproductively active females actually give birth during the winter uh, while they are in their dens in torpor. So it usually happens um, mid-January to mid-February, so just a couple weeks ago. Uh, they give birth to one to five cubs, usually just about two though, uh, and the cubs are born almost completely hairless, they're born blind, and they're only about the size of a chipmunk. Um, and as you can imagine, that's pretty tough on those cubs uh, being in a cold den that doesn't really have any insulation in it. Um, so the mother acts like a furnace for them. Um, another reason why bare body temperature has to be high during the winter. She sort of envelopes them um, and often breathes on them to keep them warm because those cubs don't have any um, insulative fat and they barely have any fur. Uh, the other thing the mother does is produce milk that is incredibly high in fat, uh, about 20 to 25% fat content, which contrasts that with something like a human or a cow's milk that only like really never gets above 5%. Um, so the cubs are being nourished with this high fat milk that keeps them warm and also they're being kept warm by the female. Now, females don't reproduce every year, usually just about every other year on average, but those females that have reproduced that year Supplying um, really high quality milk uh, and a big quantity of it to cubs um, while just living, trying to sustain yourself 
all while doing this, while not eating um, or drinking for four months um, is quite a feat and it has a toll on the female. Um, usually when they emerge from torpor in the spring, they have lost about 40% of their body weight over the winter. Um, contrast that with males who usually only lose about 15 to 30%. Okay, so let's talk about emergence. So this usually happens in April, but it can happen earlier in March if the temperatures are warmer. Males are the first ones to emerge. Um, last are the females that had cubs over the winter. Uh, and when bears emerge from hiber from torpor, remember, not hibernation, there's no lowering, there's no major lowering of body temperature. Uh, but when they emerge from torpor, they go through a stage that some people refer to as walking hibernation, um, which basically is a time when their metabolism um, is ramping up and recalibrating to their activity level. So it takes a while for the metabolism to speed up after it was relatively slowed down, not super low, uh, during the winter. And so bears actually usually end up continuing to lose weight uh, the first few weeks after they emerge um, while their metabolism is waiting to catch up with their activity level. So they don't eat much at that period. Uh, but a couple weeks after emergence, they start eating a lot because they haven't eaten all winter. Uh, so before things like uh, shoots of grasses and sedges in the wetlands and skunk cabbage roots or willow catkins um, start to become available, uh, this time in early spring can be a really lean time for bears, which is why it's Im really important to make sure that you take your bird feeders in at night starting in late March or April. Um, because as you can imagine, sunflower seeds are really tempting for a bear. And if you've had a bear come to your bird feeder or come like eat out of your trash or something before, uh, it's especially important for you to do this because bears actually have a really good memory in terms of where they found food before. And they also have an excellent sense of smell, um, way better than even a bloodhounds. So in order to avoid human bear conflicts this spring, let's take our bird feeders in at night, not put our trash out until the morning of trash day, make sure there's no pet food outside, uh, even clean your barbecues and your grills if you didn't do that um, back at the end of the summer. Um, yeah, so just a couple weeks, we should uh, hopefully start seeing signs of black bears again out on the landscape. Uh, that is it for today. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you guys soon for another micro class. Bye